Hello and welcome to my channel TFF, Teacher from Finland. My name is Jouni Vilkka and this and the following few videos are about uh, philosophical or critical thinking. This video in particular is about thinking as discussion or debate. Um, you can think of a pink elephant uh, flying on a broomstick if you want to. You can uh, memorize a phrase or a number and repeat it almost endlessly in your mind. These are examples of what might be considered thinking, but they are not what people usually mean when they t uh, talk about thinking. This would be just ways of entertaining an idea, uh, which in itself is of course a useful ability to have, but uh, proper thinking goes far beyond merely entertaining an idea. What I mean by proper thinking uh, can also be referred to as critical thinking. It requires the evaluation uh, of ideas and claims, uh, assessing uh, the validity and uh, truthfulness of those ideas or claims uh, in order to be able to decide whether to believe the claim or to agree to a suggestion. One way to think about thinking is to compare it to a debate or a discussion. If you debate with others properly, you certainly have to think. Of course, you can debate uh, without really thinking much by simply repeating phrases and talking points without actually thinking about them. Often that is what happens when people debate because, unfortunately, uh, they want to win the debate. Uh, that is not what a good debate is about. Uh, but the framing of the whole thing as a debate, usually or at least easily, leads to that fairly useless result. That is why I prefer to use the term discussion. A good discussion is perhaps similar to a debate, but the goal of the participants is not to win, but to learn, uh, to come to a, the correct or true or best conclusion or decision. Um, that should always be the aim, even in a debate. Uh, the participants may not, of course, come to an agreement, but uh, they still may uh, remain in amicable disagreement. Uh, if you think about such a good discussion, perhaps with your friends, uh, you can see uh, that the participants will try to convince each other that a given view or a course of action is the correct one. But because they are not trying to simply win uh, they will need to take the other views into account. They may realize errors in their own thinking or note that there is a disagreement regarding the facts of the case. They will together look for the best solution to the problem at hand. Good philosophical thinking is like having a good discussion, but it can occur completely in your own mind. You can think of philosophical or critical thinking as internalized discussion or debate. In fact, a traditional way of presenting philosophical ideas is the form of a dialogue. To think philosophically, you can take the roles of the different participants yourself. You can present your case, but then also try to see flaws in it. And then you, uh, if you see those uh, flaws, you can also try to fix them. Uh, it's not easy, which is why you need to study. When you learn about uh, the other views, uh, other ways of making uh, or formulating questions, uh, and ways of analyzing different claims, or of making a case uh, against some idea, uh, you can add these uh, as tools 
in your own toolbox of thinking. Uh, you can uh, learn to use those tools better uh, in your own internal debate or discussion. It may have already become obvious, but uh, I will still try to emphasize that critical thinking is not about criticizing others or being negative. Um, this is uh, very important to understand. Uh, proper criticism can be constructive, uh, for example, suggesting alternative uh, ways of dealing with the issue at hand. Like a good movie critic, a critical thinker will also applaud good ideas and good uh, justifications for them and not just try to tear them down. Um, the other side of this coin is uh, to not be offended when uh, your own ideas are criticized. You should learn to distance yourself from whatever views you happen to hold at present and understand that your current views may be false, or at least not the best. Um, so don't get attached to uh, ideas. But because people often do get attached to their ideas, it helps if you formulate your criticism in the form of a question. Instead of simply saying that a justification provided for a claim, uh, for example, uh, is false, uh, you can ask, uh, is that justification really solid enough? Or in other ways. Uh, by being indirect in your criticism, uh, you may avoid a phenomenon uh, where a discussion turns into a useless debate where people take things personally, only seeking victory instead of seeking the truth. In such a debate, a person is unlikely to admit uh, to being wrong or even having a weak point in their case. Uh, so there's no learning here. When uh, people are uh, able to distance themselves from the issue uh, and their own opinions, they become more detached and objective and more able to assess those opinions dispassionately. Philosophical and other uh, uh, discussion and debate does not always occur uh, only within the mind of a single person. Two Finnish philosophers, Lena Kurki and Tuukka Tomperi, have written a book about using debate as a teaching method in schools. Uh, they provide a set of rules uh, or guidelines um, for a good discussion or debate. These are good guidelines, in my opinion, uh, so I will try to translate them here. First, everyone must be heard. This means that you uh, only speak on your own turn. Everyone must be given their turn equally, uh, not just the loudest. And um, you have to listen to everyone well uh, in order to really try and understand them, uh, them, their views, their points and the justifications for them. No one is allowed to silence others by speaking over them. Two. All claims have to be justified through reasoning. All claims should be provided with a justification at the latest uh, when someone else asks for it. You cannot claim your view to be justified if in fact no rational justification for it has been offered. 3. Uh, you must strive for clarity. Whenever needed, uh, you must always try to define your concepts and uh, to specify what exactly it is you are talking about. Uh, you have to present your thoughts as clearly as possible. Uh, you know, if others ask uh, you to clarify your thoughts, you have to try and do so. Unclear 
uh, expressions must not be intentionally used to distract others. Four, you have to stick to the issue. Uh, so you must not distort what others have said. And if you try to criticize someone else's views, you have to remember uh, what those views are and uh, to be able to present those views in your own view words. And you must not get sidetracked and uh, certainly you must not intentionally sidetrack the discussion with red herrings. You have to be able to show how your own thoughts, claims or counter-arguments or whatever are connected to what has been said earlier. Five, uh, you have to be honest with yourself and with others. Uh, if your view cannot be justified or the justification given for your view turns out to be weak, you have to admit it. Uh, if the views of the other participants uh, are shown to be stronger, well-founded and so on, you have to admit that. The best thoughts and claims must always be accepted if no defeating counter-arguments or better contradictory claims are not presented instead. 6. You have to accept peaceful disagreement. Uh, so, everything that has been said during the discussion and all thoughts in general can be uh, criticized and examined. Uh, fruitful disagreement must be accepted in all things. But the point is that uh, these disagreements are about the subject of discussion and The disagreement must not lead to quarrels outside the discussion. In a way, the discussion ends and that's it. You can still be friends after that. <laughs> um, so these are rules or guidelines and in my opinion, as I said, these are really good guidelines for any kind of discussion, not just a classroom debate, which is what they were originally designed for. You uh, especially should try to remember them uh, if you are trying to have a philosophical discussion, both in so-called real life uh, and online, obviously. The latter, in my opinion, is far superior as a medium of discussion. Uh, as you are not forced to respond immediately. If you notice that it is difficult to stay calm, uh, as sometimes may happen, uh, you can uh, more easily take a break uh, from an online discussion than an IRL discussion. Uh, and then you can analyze your emotions before acting on them. If tempers are flaring, uh, it is harder to do this in real life, but I would still advise you to try to do it anyway. The next video will be about the methods of philosophy. See you then.